Welcome to Medicine Handy Point. Today we will discuss history taking from a patient presenting with collapse. So let's discuss that. Collapse have few causes. So let's discuss the, the causes first. In cardiac causes, we have four causes. Arrhythmia can lead to collapse. Aortic stenosis can lead to hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy can lead to collapse and MI can also causes collapse. So these are the cardiac causes. Then we have neurological causes. In neurological causes, we have epilepsy leading to collapse, unconsciousness, uh, vertebral basilar ischemia can lead to it, autonomic failure. So diabetic autonomic failure, Parkinson's disease and multi-system atrophy, they can lead to postural drop and patient will collapse. Then we have vasovagal uh, syncope, uh, which is usually caused by prolonged standing and and standing in the heat and or e eating large meat can lead to collapse. Carotid sinus hypersensitivity, which is a condition in which carotid sinus is hypersensitive to pressure changes leading to vagal stimulation and collapse. Then metabolic causes we have hypoglycemia leading to collapse. Uh, other in other causes we will include also orthostatic hypotension uh, because of other causes like diuretic dehydration hemorrhages and we have hyperventilation syndrome in which the patient will be hyperventilating because of the uh, anxiety or panic attack and leading to collapse. So in history, um, what uh, how we approach the history we will ask what happened during the episode uh, before the episode and after the event so this is uh, how we will approach the history so first we will ask about about the prodromal symptoms we will specifically ask open question what happened before the collapse uh, what did you feel so we can ask some questions like if the patient is having seizure uh, so and uh, leading to collapse so we'll ask uh, did you experience anything strange before the you collapse so in a strange sometime before the seizure there is aura in the form of abdominal pain nausea odd sensation um, and feeling strange uh, um, or taste and a smell and excessive fear and then the patient may have seizures and collapse. Uh, we will ask any neurological symptom before the event. So sometimes the patient may develop one-sided weakness leading to because of the hemorrhage or uh, a clot, ischemic clot leading to raise intracranial pressure patient becoming unconscious and having seizure. We'll ask, uh, uh, did the patient had any severe headache before the collapse? Uh, maybe subarachnoid hemorrhage leading to this intracranial pressure and collapse and seizures. Then we will ask, does the patient has any nausea, abdominal pain, flushing, light headedness, and blurring of the vision before the collapse? This is basically vasovagal uh, symptoms. We'll ask about any chest pain, nausea and sweating leading to MI or palpitation, maybe arrhythmia, uh, suggesting cardiac cause and then sudden loss of consciousness with rapid recovery, mostly it is arrhythmia. Then we will ask precipitant, uh, what causes the collapse? So uh, we'll start from the logical question, we'll ask the uh, open question, what triggered the, uh, triggered the collapse? So, any fatigue, uh, sleep deprivation, hunger, flashion of the light, illicit drug withdrawal, recent illness will lead to precipitation of seizure and patient will collapse. Raising arms above the head may precipitate collapse by ste stealing phenomena causing, causing vertebral basilar ischemia. The patient has... <coughs> actually blockage in the subclavian artery so to the arm the blood is supplied uh, 
uh, uh, by the collaterals from the vertebral artery. So if the patient is uh, doing too much work with the hands or raising arms above the head, uh, they, there will be stealing of the blood from the vertebral which is the posterior circulation leading to dizziness, vertigo and collapse. Uh, we will ask, uh, does before the um, collapse, the, the patient was moving the neck too much or was shaving or wearing tight collar, it can stimulate the carotid sinus and lead to collapse. And then we will ask about uh, standing in the heart, whether prolonged standing or eating large meat and then needing to collapse, it is actually vasovagal syncope. Then we will ask whether the patient is was having uh, collapse during maturation, defecation, defecation, coughing or sneezing. This is actually syncopal collapse. Then we will ask uh, exertional syncope is always cardiac in orange and we will ask whether the patient was having uh, any physical activity before the collapse and the causes are aortic stenosis or hookum or arrhythmias. Then we will ask uh, collapse during standing uh, or changing of the posture. This is actually orthostatic hypotension leading to collapse. We will ask about prolonged fasting. For prolonged fasting can cause hypoglycemia and collapse. And lastly, we will ask does the patient have any anxiety, fears leading to hyperventilation and leading to collapse. So, after asking prodromal symptoms, we will ask any precipitant which will point out towards any particular etiology. Then, this will be followed by events during the episode. So, what happened when the patient collapsed? We will ask, did you lose consciousness? Uh, do you remember what happened during the collapse? Then if the patient has lost consciousness, consciousness then collateral history is important. So if the attendant who will be giving us the collateral history says that the patient became pale uh, during the collapse, means it is syncope mostly. If, but if the attendant tells the patient become blue during the event, it is likely a seizure. Seizure activity, usually the patient becomes stiff initially and then jerky movements. The patient can have tongue bite, the patient can have frothing at the mouth, the patient will have loss of control of urine or feces and uh, duration of episode importance. Syncope lasts for few seconds while seizure activity lasts for several minutes. This history will be given by the attendant. Then we will ask events after the collapse. What were the events after the collapse? Does the patient remember what happened? So if the patient recovered quickly, it is cardiac cause or vasovagal. Uh, while if the patient recovery is prolonged, it is likely a seizure activity. We will ask about confusion, headache, lymph weakness after collapse, which will su suggest post-ictal period of the seizure activity. We will ask about any such events in the past. Now in the past history, we will ask different cardiac issues, epilepsy, stroke, Parkinson's disease, diabetes, anxiety disorder, um, important questions, medication, special insulin, oral hypoglycemic drugs, beta blockers, diuretics and AC inhibitor, ARB and calcium channel blocker, all causes postural drop. We will ask about any anticonvulsant uh, compliance to the therapy if the patient is already uh, epileptic patient. Family history, sudden cardiac death in the family in form of having hookum or long QT intervals. And we will ask about illicit drug use, alcohol use, we will ask about occupation, whether the patient is prone to injury, if he or she collapsed during the workplace, we will ask about the driving as well. If the patient collapsed during the driving, is very dangerous and we should inform the licensing authorities.
I hope you like the video and please subscribe to the channel.